and accept a mean of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guess and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I want to introduce you to my wonderful guest, Karen Ablett. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women at a crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future, and transform their present, so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life regression, past life regression, angelic Reiki, angel cards, meditation, hypnosis, to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Karen Ablett, who will be telling us about her journey and how by understanding our emotions, we can use them to our advantage to change our story. Now, Karen has always experienced life from a different perspective, but it took her a long time to understand in the way she does now with being so empathic, empath, empathic. I always get that word mixed up. She has learned through some harsh life experiences, especially a difficult and abusive marriage, how in the end she could use this ability to her advantage. Karen is a mum of four. Oh, sorry, Karen is mum to, to, to four wonderful children, two young adults who are on the autistic spectrum and all highly sensitive. Again, she has been a mum through a very different lens, and that is hard work, but rewarding, and it's been a huge learning curve. Now, as a tattoo artist, Karen has had to find ways to manage her own anxiety and stresses, and now she is a trainer in heart math, the balance procedure, and an angelic Reiki master teacher. Karen has learned to overcome PTSD and burnout, though it is something she's still learning to manage, but thankfully her energy is now returning. Karen teaches parents, children, and young people, as well as professionals, how to understand our emotions and how to use them to our advantage, how to reset quickly. Now, this is great with domestic violence and autism. By providing them with a tool set of techniques and strategies to overcome often what we can't change until we do. Above all, Karen teaches from her own experience how to understand ourselves, improve our relationships, and to keep learning as we go on the various levels simultaneously. So we have a holistic approach to this lifetime. Karen believes we are here to learn and not get bogged down by what's happened to us or by our circumstances, that we have the most innate and immense ability to change things for the better benefit all of humanity. So without further delay, hello Karen and welcome to the Angels of Destiny show. How are you today? Hi Ray, I'm fine thank you, hope you are. <laughs> thank you yes. for having me on. Oh you're welcome, thank you for coming on. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Karen and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. We'll try to say hello to everyone who says hello and answer any questions or comments. So Karen, why don't you tell us about yourself and how by understanding our emotions, we can use them to our advantage to change our story? I think like many empaths, um, we have an overload of, of emotions. And one thing I learned fairly early on with having children on the autism spectrum, despite many so-called you know, professionals, well-meaning people, mm -hmm. saying they don't experience emotions, I found the complete opposite. So I started to question a lot of things from their perspective and, and from my own. And I got a lot of insight into my own emotions and how I operate through how they understand and how they process various emotions. So obviously, usually to the extremes, but by regulating my own emotions... I have more of a, an impact on how they respond to various uh, situations of stimuli and so on. Um, we really were at the sharp end of the wedge when we went through, I'll say weeks, we went through it as a family with the divorce process, um, a very, very unfair judicial system. Um, didn't make it easy. Um, despite the background made it worse um, and I had to be on top of my emotions more than I ever have been um, had incredibly bad um, IBS <laughs> and so on 
<laughs> after I was getting it physically, but I really had, there was, you know, there was a lot going yeah. on at that point. And um, I started to look at life very differently, having the children on my own, um, having a very good headmaster and who when he finally got to know who I was, was very helpful in the way, the, the approach I had with the children. And we had a really good consultant from Australia and maybe on the spectrum himself, I don't know. And it just gave me a lot more belief in myself and the way that I was approaching things. So I quickly sort of manoeuvred away from what a lot of professionals were saying. So this would have been about, gosh, where are we now? It's about 13 years ago. Wow. So I've been talking about this stuff for a long time, the insights I was having. And I thought, this is all back to front. This is not quite how you're thinking it. You know, I get where you're coming from, but it's completely, you see maybe a child for an hour at a time, if you're lucky. And they're often going to be on their best behaviour. They don't want to have autism. They don't want to be on the spectrum. They sort of be like everybody else. And so they're not getting the experience that you're getting at home. Um as you mentioned, I'm a tattoo artist. I really had to become under pressure. Um, one of my, the elder of my sons fits the PDA profile, which is pathological demand avoidance, which is a very quick zero to 100, full-blown meltdown very easily. Um, very difficult to argue with or to get them to do anything. It has to be their decision. So... When I finally, I was only I've known known for a, about a couple of years, where he is on the spectrum. You, you often you can't get a diagnosis, so I had to really go out on my own. And the PDA Society said this is from the um, consultants that work with young people on, with this profile. It's the hardest thing that they ever deal with. They're alone, living it twenty four seven within the family group and so on. So. Um, I sort of particularly named that son because he causes me a lot more work. I do a lot more work on myself, and we really just push each other. We're very em empathetic, both of us. So it it's quite uh, whatever I'm sending out, he's going to mirror basically. <laughs> and that's something I, I learnt very early on with the police, especially having a lot of the police with autism. Having been in a lot of environments where the police have been involved, is unfortunately. They are often their own worst enemies. They are sending out the energy signals. The person on the spectrum is receiving that and amplifying them, and they're getting the blame for actually somebody else's um, emotional output. So I started looking at emotions very sort of much more deeply. Um, mm. I came into one of the uh, techniques that I teach quite by chance if there is such a thing I was given the book my husband it turned out um did the book launch the lady that created the balance procedure she gave him the book as a thank you um gave me the book I've spoken I've spoken about this all my life all my tattoo clients they I've got me in the chair five hours okay let's find out what you remember when you were younger <laughs> and have an intro I don't really do small talk it's just like I, I want to know the deep stuff in life you know this mm. isn't who we are so um anyway I spent three years telling my clients about this stuff thinking why am I teaching it I, I know this this is straightforward so um literally my work went quiet and the first workshop came up so that was September 2012 and by um December 2012 I was a trainer in balance procedure and that was then I found out my husband had did um, Jenny Cox's um, book launch and that was the story so that's how I came into it I felt quite intimidated because everybody else were clinical hypnotherapists teachers therapists from all over Harley Street all over the country and I was just like what am I doing here you know like what am I doing <laughs> It'd be a lot safer sat in my studio, hidden away, just one to one. I know what I'm doing. Like, yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> just get your life start to run okay, then you're gonna throw it all apart again. But anyway, um so um I was, I'm very shy, um quite I'm naturally quite anxious, quite nervous. Um I would now equate that to people that I'm aware of those that are more sensitive 
our antennas are just more finely tuned and we're picking things up on all different levels at the same time. And this is where I see a link with autism is mm-hmm. their senses are more wide open. It's not the be all and end all. There's a lot more to it than that. But I feel they're getting a load of information in one go. And it's like, how do you process that amount of information? And that's through the heart center. So I was doing some research through um, balance procedure and I was looking some stats up and various information on heart mass. And I was really intrigued. And I found they had the trainers course coming up which they don't run very often so I end up having a two-hour consultation with a lovely lady called Amajot and um, she said that yeah there's no problem with you joining this course you're you're quite okay to do this went along for the training and it was like again very intimidating so I'd spend a week away from home which I hadn't done away from the children um oh my god the files were so thick of information I hadn't done the workshops I didn't know what even what I was supposed to be learning to teach and we had to go straight in and start teaching the the material um bit of a baptism of fire but I absolutely loved it I had really good trainers around me were really good really good caliber and um yeah, I did really well in one area. I didn't do so well in another area, but I, mm-hmm. I learned from that, exactly. And I found some missing pieces. Um, and in the background, I still don't know to this day how I came across the lady that taught me angelic Reiki. I don't know how I came across her. But um, and it's funny, that's how we've connected now. Um, but I'd already, I did my level one and two, and I knew I wanted to take it further at some stage. So I did that... Um, Oh, it's probably about three, four years ago now. And I've got sort of quite a wide range of tools that I can teach parents to use under really tricky circumstances, especially with their children, and they can teach their children. So they're all benefiting the angelic Reiki if they can learn to channel. They both benefit from the energy. I mean, we know there is nothing better than the energy that we're able to channel. It's yeah. just phenomenal. And it's changing, as we talked about before. It is changing. The frequency is changing. The energy is changing. And we need to bring that through now to the many other parents that may not necessarily have this background, but we know it's quite accessible. And there's so many poor people being opened up. Heart mass is the science and research behind how we operate it's understanding our emotions it's a series of strategies techniques there's i've got a wide range of um information um and various techniques that aren't all out there um for people to use so i put it together in a way that they know how to use it when to apply it and how to the point we're getting to is a a natural reset so as you're going into more stressful situations your body is automatically calming down saying hang on a minute this is fine you've been here before let's calm yes and it does it automatically you're not even aware you're doing it it just goes boom 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 and you're sending out the emotion because you've been practicing it you're sending out the emotion a completely different environment to often the situation you're walking into so I hate courtrooms I've been seen my fair share of there was a lot of people that have gone through DV and I I've been like I could hardly walk the IBS was so bad um and I've been if we're able to manage our own energy field the worst thing I found with judges and magistrates and so on is being that over anxious. They don't know how to deal with it. When mm. you're on high stress level, especially you've got someone with autism who won't even go into the courtroom, you're like, oh, what am I going to do now? You know, wh- where do I go? And you, you know, you, you have to be so in control of yourself to render the outcomes that you need. So you've really got to. You've really got to do it. That's all there is to it. So I've used it in these various situations. I've walked away with results that nobody could have predicted. I was told wouldn't even be possible. They've not always been fair or right, but they've been a damn sight better with what I've been told by solicitors and barristers what the end result would be. And you know as a mum, you know 
what is right or wrong. And if you are authentic and congruent to yourself and things have happened exactly as you've experienced them, so you're basically telling the truth and your energy is in alignment with what is the best for your child, you will achieve, I believe, you can achieve more of those outcomes. It's not easy. It's effort. It's really hard work sometimes. But you are left with the... There's the you have no doubt as to who and what you are. And mm-hmm. this human experience just isn't who we are. We're so much more. And you start opening up for another level to extent. You are so actually thank you for that. We, we've come out safe. Thankfully, we've been fine. And I've learned so much as a result through it. So I've been able to let the past go, put that in the background. If that person has chosen to learn with the experience or not, that's the, that's for themselves. But for myself and for my children, my family, and for the rest of my life, more importantly, that person, that experience, that does not define me, that has, does not have the impact on me that it could have done. And I will not allow that to happen. Burnout was something different. PTSD was something I had no idea that I had either. I did my heart math training a bit like TV and they put everything on the board and you think, mm. oh my God, that's my life. And you're in with a whole room of people that like, uh, I don't know, how does somebody know <laughs> who these things to people? I don't get it. I just don't, I just don't get it. And I was in with a room full of people that exactly the same experience. And it was like, Jesus, what planet am I on? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> beat me up, Scotty. Where did I end? This is this just, <laughs> so anyway, you learn, learn to, you know, uh absorb it and so on but the um i've lost my track a bit uh ptsd but ptsd i went to um, a local charity i was offered some counseling i was expecting to go in there and say this is where my son's at through so he's gone through a heck of a lot and we all have as a family but he's the divorce was bad enough but what we went through without knowing or understanding the conditions that he his challenges and so on there was no help given to us whatsoever. So it was very, we've done this blindly and I've learned everything as a result of going through it blindly. Um, so our experience was no no help or support whatsoever and he went into care where we were imploding as a family. Um, I couldn't take it anymore. Um, my, my husband, it, it would have impacted his job. My clients was having to cancel my clients. My four-year-old, then four-year-old had stopped speaking. He'd become a selective mute. So... They call social services in. Social services would have been involved and they were suggesting or recommending um, respite. And the one of the directors in Peterborough um, went back on her word and said that she would provide it and they went back. Um, it was like, and I know a lot of parents out there have been in this position and still are. It's like, at what point do you break? What is the straw? And he was actually arrested for an unarrestable offence, given a bed for the night, because we couldn't cope. And I can actually say this now without bursting into tears, so I know I've got... Yeah. <laughs> and I, my, my... Anything to... Um, save's not the right word. I don't believe in save and rescue. We are all in... We can empower ourselves. But anything so parents can spot the signs way ahead, have the energy and stamina to deal with a system that's heavily weighted against us, never mind the challenges, but everything that is weighted against, we, we're given, we're, everything's thrown against us. And it, it, it's not, it's a bit like drug abuse. There, there's no, um, there's no background or demographic group or anything. Everybody's affected. I would just like to say at this point, to the government, out, you know, they and local authorities, they used to get with this. There are a huge number coming through. Mm. Minor tip of the iceberg. Um, there's there's a lot I could do about the situation, so I'm going to write about it, or I'm writing about hey. it, as you know. It's a story for parents to, yeah, go keep going when you're going to find your levels are going to rise and they're going to rise and they're going to rise. You're going to get challenged like you've never been challenged, but you've got it within you to do it. And you just have to keep going. So that, that that's that's my message. Um, so I went to this charity thinking, 
I was, you know, I need to somehow get my son to counselling for PTSD. And she looked at me and she said, you've got PTSD. He said, but my question is, I don't know how you've got as far as you've got. You should be literally <laughs> six foot under with some of the stuff by now. And I explained about the techniques and that that I teach and so on. So I got through the treatment. I had a really great counsellor, a really great psychotherapist who got this stuff on another level as well. So instead of like three years of treatment, did it in 18 months. And I ha I've had the, the most amazing understanding in, in real time of how this works, understanding the patterns, the things that we create. So from the emotional level, we are forever creating. So a lot of a lot of focus is put on our minds yeah. and I've through my experience very much gone with the emotional level and as much as we can think if our feelings are not matching what we're looking to create or worse if you're having PTSD and I think most people on the planet have probably got PTSD <laughs> right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you're, if you're not able to understand your emotions and then self-regulate, you're going to be operating on a much lower level. You could have the brightest mind in the world. You are not going to achieve what you're able to when your feeling level, your subconscious level, which is your, it generates your experience, is going to be way down here. And from my experience with young people. And again, with parents, you lose sight so quickly when you're in like with, with, with DV and any difficult situation, you quickly lose sight of your old life, of who you were, how you felt. You're so consumed and absorbed by this high intense level of challenge that you you don't know how to get from where you were to where you need to get to. So hopefully I can work with parents and whoever to show them the fastest way they can go from one state of being to another. But it does take work, effort, and sometimes hard work. And you get challenged. As we yeah. know in the universe, when you step up to the challenge, the universe is going to challenge you again. So you're challenging yourself on another level. That's the difference rather than a system and so on. I believe we're in a very changing planet. We're on a very changing planet. Many of us have come here to create those changes, and I believe autism is very much mm. part of that, and it's on different levels. So when I talk about something, it's not just on one level. You've got the physicality, you have the spiritual level, you have the paradigm level, all these different things that are going on right now. All these are playing out on different levels at the same time, and that is why the world looks rather mad at the moment. Yeah, And you've got the glimmers coming through. They're more than glimmers now, as we know. You've got this whole new reality coming through, starting to permeate up through the higher levels of this new paradigm and trying to, desperately trying to release the old. It's starting to happen. And you've got the old, few of the old bits and pieces trying to keep hold of the power, but they can't because the energy no. change, as we know. So our job is to keep bringing this new energy. And so the quicker we can leave behind this old paradigm, our old story, the faster we're all moving together as a whole and we are all part of that whole to create new paradigms. So it's basically, you know, who wants a new world? Well, it's here. Yeah. We've just got to all work together now because we're all part of the puzzle and that's how we get there. And maybe with some luck and the way I see things with autism, on another level, on another frequency, they could be quite, we'll see their gifts come through Yes. Rather than trying to fit them into an old paradigm, which we know is never going to happen, we are here to change the paradigm, change change the environment so that they flourish. And this isn't just for those with autism, this is for the parents. Many parents are going undiagnosed. They're, they're quite high on the spectrum. It doesn't define anybody. It doesn't have to be. You don't even have to know whether you are. You you, you have an idea whether you've got a load of traits or not. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Just see it as a high sensitivity. Mm. And I was like, there's so many positives that come through with it, with focus and concentration. And even those on ADH, with ADHD, if you get them focused on something, they have incredible focus. It's just you can find the interests, work with the interests. So, 
yeah, mm-hmm. that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, and and it's and, it's, and it is interesting. You know, it is all all energy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because how many people have been re- in a really happy mood, and then someone who's really got really strong down energy walks in the room, and then everyone in the room just suddenly goes, oh. Yeah. You know, you know, it, it's it's so it's so obvious how how much energy, um, you know, does does you know does affect people. And it's really interesting that you were saying that um, uh, people on on the spectrum and that, you know, they are kind of like a lot more sensitive to the energies that are going around. And as parents, probably don't realize, or people around don't realize that. You, you know, so so take that example of someone negative walking in, mm-hmm. you'll go you'll go down. But someone um, with autism and that would go even further down because there it's amplified. And there's a lot of fear around autism as well. There's quite a fear. And you have this change, and it's working beyond that. And you you can't blame them really because we've they've incarnated at a time when there's massive change I mean we know it's, it's really ramped up now it we've just this last week it is really we're in it now that's all there is to it we're in it this is what we've all been born for it's happening we will be prompted to quite strongly to play out the part that we have within this 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 changing picture I see it as a positive. The more mm. people can come away from it, there's a re- as we know, I'm not even going to name it. There's a huge drive right now. It's all very fear based. I think there's a load of different things going on within that particular story. We know that fear generates a very low vibration. Yes, and it makes people um, what's the word? Um, procrastinate. What's the word? You can't move forward. Literally dead in your yeah. tracks. You know, you you've got f- f- flight or fight or freeze, and it's putting people into freeze. So the more people, and on the other plus side of it, there's a lot of humour going on with it. Oh my god, yes! So just find something to make you laugh about it. It is what it is. Um, it may hopefully just go as quickly as it as it appeared, as a lot of things do. But just don't get pulled into it. it's somebody else's story. Do not get pulled into somebody else's story. The the higher consciousness, the overall consciousness, I believe again, from my experience recently, has a much higher impact on us as a society right now than we could have ever imagined, more so than our individual um, illusion of control over our life. I think the greater consciousness is really playing out. So the, um, the more that we can permeate that with a high frequency through our emotions, the, the, better, the, the higher level we're going to achieve through that. And I, I can really see the the um, the road we're on is we're, we're doing it. We're getting there. The, the, the more we buy into the lower frequency, it's um, I see it as like a, for want of a better way of describing it, a portal at the end of a long road. So a big door for anyone that's not sure of portals. And the more we, we allow the negative frequency to come in, the further that is stretching away. So we, we need it to come closer to us now we're ready most I say many of us are more than ready that's the thing so we need to just keep going with that and focus on where we're going um, because that benefits all of humanity there are systems ready to come online um, that are going to change humanity's experience forever in a positive way and we're not going to be bogged down by the crappy stuff that we've had going on especially the last 10 years the the energy change I know about a good 10 12 years ago and yeah there was a wake-up call going on so yeah we just need to get with it now there's so much there are so many positives out there exactly yeah there is you know know, people helping out you know helping out each other um you you know they're they're, especially with the floods and everything you know people Mm -hmm. people are helping out um, you know, even with the toilet roll situation, you know, <laughs> yeah. got in and they've seen an elderly person who's like, yeah. and you know, and they've and they've given them the toilet roll. So, so it is, it is, it is the realm we are sort of like coming together now. And in the last ten years, there's, well, say in the last five years, there's been a lot more community, yeah. um, sort of like, sort of like come coming along. So, have you found? Um, because because obviously um you're we're talking about many years ago 
um, when you when you went when when you went through the system. Do you find talking to the parents with children with autism now? Do you find that um, things have changed with um, how the authorities or social services or that deal with um, deal with deal deal with young people with with the autism, or do you find it stayed the same? Uh, there's yes and no to that. I'm, there's there's more available for testing and spotting it early. Um, the my my young people that nothing's changed. The colleges are are still in the dark ages. We just had a recent experience, and that's fallen down again. For my previous conversation with you, I would like to get an educational project. Mm. up and running for young people that have failed by the current education system i have a lot of ideas for that um it 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 will change the face of education um, most definitely and it would benefit everybody we learn in whole lots of different ways um children need to be children forget whatever challenge children need to be children, especially at the age of seven or eight they're more yeah. similar playing field then why force them to do stuff at the age of four leave it to a seven or eight and then it's much easier to spot the um the academic difficulties and then by focusing on play when they're younger it's easy to spot the social difficulties yes yeah. And you can work with those and the children are not pitching themselves against each other by a system of over who can read the most at what age. Because it doesn't by the time they get to their twenties and that, it makes no difference. Just because oh. you could read a book at four, who's gonna what benefit is that to a child? If they want to read, fine, I have no problems, but the system is not making it easy to be a parent these days it's it's and it's taking the creativity the right bright the right brain side out of it the joy out of it I'm seeing we've got a lovely head teacher and my son goes such was such a lovely village school and they because they only get paid per pupil it's dire it's, you know yes. it's absolutely dire you have 60 pupils or less than 60 pupils in a school you've still got to run all of that and these sats and everything so I, I go into school and I do a, a, a mini course with children and I do heart mass with children for pre-sats and the teachers and they just sit and they learn how to regulate their own emotions because when you're relaxed you remember all the stuff you've been learning it comes easily when you're stressed you can't think of a thing as we know you yeah. know <laughs> it's all so yeah I go in I, I teach and do you know what, I, I've worked with um year twos and above um a few months back and they are so savvy they have really got some emotional savvy going on and awareness and it was an absolute joy working with them it really was it was like wow you know how you know that is just phenomenal so there's a lot of hope for the planet out there <laughs> oh yeah there's, there's you know I've, I've, um, we, we've you know I'm um, doing future life progression you know we've we've gone into the future in that and you know the, you know things things are okay you know the, the world yeah. is not going the world is not going to end within the next 10 20 yeah. 30 50 100 years the world still continues in thousands of years time yeah. we we've evolved yeah. but 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 the planet is still here and we are still here in one form or another so um we've we've got we've got no worries um uh, you know about it at all and yeah. again it is you, you know we sort of like came in our generation we we actually came in to help the children that are, that are coming through now mm -hmm. to integrate to bring that higher energy here but we just have to start remembering in ourselves that that's why we're here to help them. Absolutely, yeah, that's a very good reminder there. Just to say, you said to me earlier and about groups, how somebody can go into a room and change the mm. um, the, the the energy. As we know, as as empaths, we all pick up on that really quickly. But with heart mass, it's been proven when you have a group of people. I think this was done with a group of ten. I think we do it in smaller groups. So I think you could probably, with a, a small, if in a small space, you could probably do it just the same. But by nine people using utilizing the heart math techniques, 
they were able to influence the tense person who was highly stressed to come down to their level to meet them at their le- or to meet them at their level I should say yeah. them up and that's intriguing so we all have the capacity and the ability to have that influence over another person's energy field and calm them down through our own en- our own emotions which is going back to what I was saying at the beginning that's how it works so it's quite yeah. easy it is really quite easy to do um the um it's a shame local authorities through i've never bought into austerity there's plenty of money on the planet there's plenty of food there's plenty of money there's plenty of water it's just how it's distributed so we need to get the balance in so the i can see a stream of money coming through into this because these are our future yeah there is a bigger group coming through they're already can't cope with the the western um birth rate has been falling a lot over the last what 10 years and it's going to continue to fall so um the these young people need to be valued yeah that's all there is to it and we need to be working with their abilities and understanding who they are and that means changing systems and society and that the sooner we get with it the quicker and easier this is going to be and it's not all expensive it's just changing environments it's it's, it's educating parents understand this is not a life sentence there are a lot of gifts and pluses with this no matter if you've got pda and it is blooming hard at times there are pluses with it and the more that we can show our children we're understanding them obviously not in a patronizing way yeah the more we can support them and then educate teachers and head teachers and so on and say look there's another way of doing this another way of looking at it another approach and, and it works mm. yeah th- 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 this works and you just have to take the stress out of it you know what they're trying to do to people <laughs> <laughs> exactly and you know and, and that, that is we we do really need, need to learn you know, not not to be so. You know, that's why I'm such a big advocate of meditation. You know, mm-hmm. and they should be teaching meditation totally. as, as, as literally as soon as children go around a ball. You know, going to yeah. school. They, well, they, actually, they should, you know, they should be. Ray, I'm going to take it back. Before that, we need to be teaching. You know, two some very major things in schools. Um, child psychology. Um, we'd see a lot less young parents. <laughs> Uh, and through that the understanding of abuse which is some of the work that I do is understanding the abuse and the impact on a child's developing brain and I would say this goes back to fetal level Mm. as we work on a fetal level with the energy work um, and parents can learn to do that for themselves it's there's no magic trick or anything like that these are just these is as you say we're all energy we have an energetic body this is what that's what we are so we can quite easily change we change our dna i mean science this is all scientific fact. oh it's yeah not, um, exactly when you start working on this level especially with the heart center is the key the thymus in the center of our chest it's the seat of our immunity it's our most energetic electromagnetic output it's um between oh depending how you measure it uh, 60 and uh, 6,000 times more powerful than the than the brain. I'm not sidelined the brain at all. It's a great piece of uh, engineering there. Yeah. And um, the brain only emits half an inch of energy, and the heart we can measure to about three foot, probably to about 12 foot, but it's infinite as we know. So whatever we're sending out on an, um, an emotional level, it's basically our superpower because that's what we're sending out, and that's what we're getting back. But um. Also, just to say, the techniques that I teach for two of them, they are conscious ways of working with energy. So, as you say meditation, this is this is like active med- conscious meditation. So you don't have to necessarily go off to another space. No. You can do, but and if you can't meditate, um, heart mass meditations are fantastic. Um, learning to do those, so um, it's it all comes together. Um, through, through that perspective so it's um, and then you start like energizing yourself and you can feel it you know yeah so. yeah <laughs> you know I, I quite often I quite often you know say to people you know just take yourself to the bathroom or something and just literally close your eyes start taking slow deep breaths in and out mm-hmm. um, you know concentrate on your heart and then you'll find you'll come out you know a lot more calmer a lot more focused you know, and it's a it's a quick fix. 
mm-hmm. um, for for you to do in 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 that moment, and it and it works. Absolutely. Um, the more that you learn to do these things, your body's only going to thank you because physiologically you're going to benefit on every level, and it. it, it, it this is how we generate our hormones. All the hormone responses in the body are generated through the heart. And guess what? It's the emotions that have such a, an impact on what's going on. I'm not going to negate the physical aspects like good no. nutrition and the things that we need on a physical level. But on this level, on an energetic level, this also has a very big impact on what goes on within our bodies. So, um, and... The soon you, you can understand where how tired you are getting. If anyone is, is getting to that point, start to do something, whatever technique you feel drawn to doing, start bringing that in because that will stop you from going too far downhill. And then you can work forward from that point. You don't really want to get to the point that you are in a nervous breakdown, flat on the floor and you can't get up and you're benefiting no one. You need to... You need to really question yourself so where you are you're not so happy in your life you're finding it hard to laugh things that used to make you laugh i think it's such a, a clear quick one that's one of the first things to go when you lose pleasure in life where you start measuring yourself against other parents that don't have this ever challenge and don't even your friends they're not going to understand what you're going through and i say live this 24 7 and you're sleep deprived for years and years at a time and so is your young person do not measure yourself against those parents it is an unfair competition you're going to lose it but where you are going to win is when you are dealing with the challenges and you've learned how to look after yourself and your young and your environment your family environment you are gaining so many brownie points <laughs> on a higher level you're getting it at that point so if you're noticing anything and you're getting tired and you're getting tired very easily and you're going down really quite quickly or, or quite get some help it means going to a doctor whatever that they have their you know i don't um sideline allopathic medicine either but do what you're drawn to but do do choose some sort of energetic technique to yes. empower you because you'll you need it on different levels. You need things on different levels. And you'll thank yourself and then your children will thank you because you are then teaching your children how to look after themselves. So it's really quite a, um, a, a big process. And then you are all sending the ripples out. Exactly. Where we're at and the bigger the ripples we can send out. <laughs> exactly. The, the so much better it is for everyone. Yeah, totally. Totally. Uh, uh, absolutely. So, um, as you know, um, I do um, a guided meditation to angel cards. So, each week I like to ask my guests what they would like for themselves and those watching. So, Karen, would you like me to do a guided meditation or pull an angel card for you and those watching? Yeah, I think an angel card would be quite interesting and um, for everybody. Cool. Excellent. So, so we do the cards, and as um, as I say, when I do the cards, I don't do the cards to predict the future, mm. um, because even though I work with past life, we heal the past so that we can be fully present. And although I work with the future, when we know the future, we don't worry so much; so we can be fully in the present. So, the cards always stand for what we need to know for a high good. So, mm. I'll just give these cards a quick clean. <laughs> this. So. What does Karen and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? What does Karen and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? What does Karen Okay. So the card that came out. Cleansing waters, purification, activates a vibrant life force. Cool. How apt is that? That is very apt, completely, because I came across Burdock yesterday. <laughs> ah, yes. So, yes, I will, um, I will take that as a big message, loud and clear, because each time we go up onto our own levels, we have a cleansing out on a physical level that we need to do. So, yes, I get your message. Loud and yes. clear, thank you very much. Yes, yes, that's <laughs> angel. You know, and that's not just for Karen, that's for, you, that's for you watching as well, you know. You need to start cleansing your, cleansing yourself out physically, mentally and emotionally um, to help you um, navigate uh, the, the choppy waters that we're going through at the moment, heading towards that calm um, 
ni nice calm water that's that's going to be coming um, coming in uh, in the in the future. So, Karen, do you have any um, insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? Um, things are not as bad as they're painted. Things are not as they seem right now on all sorts of levels. And the more we can hold our own and be calm, solid, secure in ourselves, the easier it is to navigate these very changing situations around us. It's nothing to be worried about. It is just a changing paradigm if I could picture like the old kaleidoscope and we're just going from one to another but it's going to keep because of the nature of this particular paradigm and we're going you know from 3D 4D to 5D there's lots of changes along the way but I think we've, it's maybe it could be a thousand year process it's not you know it's not like duh, duh, we've got to do it all now in one day it's it's but the picture's going to continually shift the hardest point that we're at is right now Yes, and there's a huge awakening going on in all sorts of ways, shapes, and forms. There may be people that the media pour scorn on that may be helping us, and people. There's the others that you might have thought were br brilliant, and they might, you know, they might disappoint you. So there's a whole lot going on. Do not buy into the um, into the fear and everything. Look at people's actions and what they're doing. And just to say, I will say, um, if, if if we, to me, if we if we focus an awful lot of negativity on our leaders, we're not helping them. No, we need to do the opposite. If anyone's seen Star Wars, I hope I'm not going to be a, a ruin to ruin this. But you need to send for anyone that's seen it. You'll know you need to send out the good energy against the negative. It's that yes. that changes it. It's not always easy. Um, so much against Trump, but he, um, you know, just to say, he's put um, an executive order that's protecting um, Native American women and children. Five thousand go missing every year. And this has been going on for 25 years and no other president's done anything about it. So I'm not, I'm just trying to give you an example. Mm. No one is perfect. Nobody is perfect out there. But I want people just to look at the wider picture and come to their own conclusions on various things. There's all sorts of different things. Time will tell as to who is what in this. Really interesting time to be a human being. I think we should. Oh my be, god! Yeah. Yeah. Let, let, let's try and enjoy it. It's not all bad. That's that's where I'm coming from. So don't get sucked into the media hype with everything. Find your own picture story. Research it. Do some other stuff. And it's not always what exactly as it seems. Does that? And yeah. The sooner we can get to the other side, then that that like that shore that we're we're heading for. The sooner we can get there, and it's like oh, and it's everyone together. We've done it together, you know. So, exactly. Yeah. And just do what I do. Don't don't watch the news and read the papers. True. Yeah, true. I just need to. I like to have an inkling of what's going on. Oh yeah, but, but just to say I don't don't agree with that. <laughs> yeah, but then that's what the radio. You know, if you if you've got the radio on and they do the news articles, oh, or you go gosh. to read your emails and you've got, yeah. and and then you get an idea, I get a sense of what of, of what's yeah. going on. I think we're going to see media changing. I think there's so many mm. good alternative news channels out there just be mindful of what you're feeling when you pick up on information and what you're ready to absorb but um there's a lot of good stuff out there you've got positive news you've got happy news if you want to find a good news story and they're just people all helping each other to exactly. say okay, there's a good news story here you've got these species coming back from extinction and it's like you know new species being found you've got when we we know how fire can be also cleansing i'm not going to go into the the background there's a lot of different things involved but look how quick the forest regenerates yes. the earth's going to be fine it's us we're the ones that need to sort this up the earth is going to be fine it is fine we could all do our bit to help it, but it's not the way it's been. It's not the emergency. It's not the big fear picture going on. It's just, let's all work together. Permaculture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we make changes, the world changes. Totally. Exactly. Yeah. So, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this and found it insightful. And the words of wisdom that um karen has given you will help you further on your journey so karen if people want to um connect with you how do they do that i can give you an email and i've got um a facebook page so the facebook page is self-centered s-e-l-f center c-e-n-t-r-e-d and my email is karen k-a-r-e-n at 
self s e l f dash as in hyphen centered c e n t r e d dot co dot uk. And I'll I'll post that in in the comments anyway, yeah. so people can just click Absolutely. on it. Thank you. So um, thank you so much, Karen, for being on the show today. It's been absolutely wonderful having you. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who's been watching. And I would like you um, to invite you to share this, as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to go clear on their destiny just like you. And if you have reached that crossroads in your life and need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I'd love to be that guide for you. Reach out and connect with me, and we can arrange a free 20 to 30-minute video call so we can chat to each other and find out how I can help you on your journey. And this Wednesday, the 19th of March, I am so excited because I'm going to be launching my membership site, which is called Angel Wings, where I will help you spread your wings and soar. Um, and um, in October, I'm going to be running a four day, three night retreat down in Glastonbury, where you can take charge of your destiny with connecting with St. Germain and Mary Magdalene. So if you're interested in joining either of them, please do contact me for more details. And I look forward to you joining me next Monday at 8 p.m. where my guest will be Vivian Fox. So again, thank you so much, Karen, for being on the show. It's been absolutely brilliant. It's been wonderful talking to you. And you did absolutely <laughs> brilliantly. <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate you having me on. So thank you everyone for watching and I will see you again next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>